Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to take the 8th numerical on sampling theorem. Please note this numerical is on bandpass sampling theorem. Let me read out the question first. A bandpass signal G of T with a spectrum as shown below is ideally sampled. Sketch the spectrum of the sampled signal at sampling frequency fs equals 25 hertz, 45 hertz and 50 hertz. Indicate if and how the signal can be recovered. Please note the diagram that is shown here. We are given the spectra of the input signal which is in fact a bandpass signal. Here we have the two frequencies indicating the Fu which is the upper frequency and Fl which is the lower frequency of the bandpass signal spectra. Let us start with the solution part now. In the numerical we are told this signal is ideally sampled. However, the ideal sampling frequency is not shown. Therefore, we will have to find the ideal sampling frequency. Now, from the given figure, as I already have said, we have two frequencies of the bandpass signal. One is the upper frequency, which is 25 hertz. And then we have the lower frequency, which is 15 hertz. Therefore, the bandwidth of this signal will be equal to Fu minus fl which is 25 minus 15 equals 10 hertz then to find the sampling frequency particularly the ideal sampling frequency we will use the formula 2 into fu divided by a factor m where m is given by the lower value of the ratio Fu divided by bandwidth. Please note when I write this type of bracket, this indicates the lower limit of this ratio. So, M here is equals to lower limit of Fu which is 25 divided by bandwidth which is 10. Therefore, this is equals to lower limit on 2.5 which is equal to 2 right so now we will substitute m equals to 2 into the equation for fs which i will call it as equation 1 so i'll write it here substitute m equals to 2 in equation 1 therefore the sampling frequency is equal to 2 multiplied by fu which is 25 divided by m which is 2 which is equals to 25 hertz right so this is the value of the ideal sampling frequency please note we are very clearly told in the numerical that the signal g of t is ideally sampled and then we are further asked to sketch the spectra of the sample signal at the given values of fs equals to 25 hertz which as we just found out is the sampling frequency and 45 hertz and 50 hertz so let us now start drawing the spectra and I'll take the first case here that is when fs equals 25 hertz. So to plot the spectra of the sample signal I'll be using the generic expression. G delta of f equals fs into summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of f minus n fs so let me substitute fs equals to 25 here so this will become let me call this as equation 2 now let me start drawing the spectra now this time we are plotting the spectra for the bandpass signals so this is a little bit different from what we have done for the baseband or ideal low pass signals in our previous numericals let me start with the x axis here now i will mark the values of frequencies on the x axis because it is going to ease the overall process right now let me plot the original spectra 
So here we have from 15 to 25. Very similarly, we have from minus 15 to minus 25. This is our original signal spectra. Let me now apply the sampling theorem. We have already learnt that when I sample a signal, the spectra of the original signal will be replicated along the frequency axis. And this is what I am going to illustrate in this diagram as well. So, all you are supposed to do is identify the value of fs. Now, in the case 1, fs is equals to 25 hertz. Come to the diagram and you are supposed to simply shift the spectra what you are looking at here both left and right by a value of 25. So, what I will do is I will take up the right side spectra which is on the positive x axis. We know that this is plus 25 and this is plus 15. So, now I have to add a value of 25 to these values that is 15 and 25 and I have to plot the same exact shape spectra on the outcome values. For example, 25 plus 25 is 50. So, I will get this point here. Then we have 15 plus 25 is 40. So, I will get this point here. Now, I have to draw the same exact shape between 40 and 50. Right. So, this is how it is done. Please note, I have shown it using discontinuous lines to make sure you understand it is a replica and not the original spectra. Now, let us do the same exact thing for the same spectra, but now this time I will shift it left. So, we have 25 minus 25. So, this will be 0 here and then I have 15 minus 25, it will be minus 10. So, just redraw the same exact spectra from minus 10 to 0. Okay, and in a very similar fashion, let me do the same for the left side spectra here. So, we have the points here minus 15 and minus 25. Now, let me shift it right. So, minus 25 plus 25 is 0. So, again, I am going at the 0 value here. Then we have minus 15 plus 25 is 10. So, this spectra is now redrawn between 0 and plus 10. So, this is shifting the left spectra right by 1 fs. If I now do the same but to the left, the spectra will appear between minus 50 and minus 40. So, I will redraw it once again here. Right. So, what you have now done is you have shifted each of the spectra left as well as right by 1 fs. In a very similar fashion, you are supposed to do the same for 2 fs. 3fs etc etc. When you do this, you will obtain the spectra of the sampled signal. Now, for saving some time, I am going to complete this spectra by shifting the same to the left and right by 2fs value. Right. So, this is how the spectra of the sampled signal would look when the value of fs is equal to 25 hertz. Please note, all you are supposed to do here is to simply shift the original spectra left as well as right by the value of n fs, where n equals to 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc, etc. Now, coming to the last part of the question, that is, is it possible to recover the original signal by the spectra of the sample signal? Now, for that, we know that we are supposed to pass the spectra through a filter and particularly if you look at this particular spectra, it is not possible to recover the original signal by passing the sample signal spectra through a low pass filter. Therefore, the only way we can recover the original signal from the sample signal spectra is by passing the sample signal spectra through a band pass filter. Now, we know that a bandpass filter will have two cutoff frequencies, Fc1 and Fc2. If we identify these values properly by looking into the diagram, we may be able to recover the original signal spectra. So, what we want at the output is a frequency band from 15 to 25. Now, if you look at the spectra between 10 and 15 carefully, you will note that 
no frequency components appear at the sample signal output. So, Fc1 can be anything greater than 10 but less than or equal to 15. So, Fc1 should be greater than 10 but less than or equal to 15. In a very similar fashion, let us now try to analyze what is the value of Fc2. Now, if you look at the frequency component exactly at 25, anything greater than 25 will enter the next replica here. Therefore, I cannot go to a frequency greater than 25. Anything less than 25 will be a loss of information and therefore, the value of Fc2 must be exactly equal to 25 hertz. Therefore, if I use a bandpass filter with Fc1 greater than 10 but less than or equal to 15 and Fc2 exactly equal to 25 hertz, then I will be able to recover the original signal from the sampled signal. Now, let me show the bandpass filter structure on the sample diagram. So, anything greater than 10 but less than 15 and exactly equal to 15. So, this will be the bandpass filter structure. Lastly, we are also asked to state if it is possible to recover or not. So, we have just shown that using a bandpass filter with so and so cutoff frequencies, it is possible to recover the original signal from the sampled signal. So, I will write it here. Right. So, that is the part A of the question. That is, to sketch the sample signal spectra at Fs equals to 25 hertz and try to find if it is completely recoverable. Let me now move on to the part B of the question that is to sketch the spectra when Fs is equal to 45 hertz. Now that we have learnt how to draw the sample signal spectra, let us waste no time in writing the equation for the sample signal and all but start with the diagram. Okay, so this is the original signal spectra. Now, to plot the sample signal spectra, as I already have discussed in the previous case, we are simply supposed to shift the frequencies right and left by the value of Fs. Now, please note this time we have the value of Fs equals to 45 hertz. So, you are supposed to add value of 45 to the frequency components. For example, this is 15, this is 25. Now, I add a value of 45 to these values. So, 25 plus 45 is 70, which will come somewhere here. Let me mark it as 70. And 15 plus 45 is 60. So, 60 is already marked. Now, I will plot the exact same shape here. Now, I will do the same for the spectra, but I will shift now to left. So, we have 25 minus of 45. So, it will be minus 20. 15 minus of 45 is minus 30. So, there will be a spectra coming here. Okay. Now, coming to the left side spectra, let me now shift it right by 45 hertz. So, this will appear here. Make the calculation, but this will appear here. And in a very similar fashion, the same spectra when shifted left will appear between minus 60 and minus 70 somewhere here okay so this is the spectra of the sample signal when fs is equals to 45 hertz so now let us look at the spectra here now if you look at the spectra very carefully what has happened the spectra are overlapping so this particular portion between plus 20 and plus 25 which i am going to just mark it so that it is very clearly visible this is the portion of the spectra where frequencies are overlapping. This is also called as aliasing or fold over. Now, whenever such a scenario arises, we can straight away say without any analysis 
that the reconstruction is not completely possible because aliasing or fold over has occurred. Therefore, now no need of any design for either the low pass filter or bad pass filter, just you straight away write reconstruction is not possible because of the spectra overlapping each other, which I will write now. Right, so this is the conclusion for part B of the numerical. Lastly, moving on to part C, where Fs is equals to 50 hertz. Now, if you have learnt sampling theorem and have really understood, you should recognize 50 hertz is equals to 2 into the ideal value of the sampling frequency, which is Fs. And we have also learnt that when a signal is sampled at a frequency of Fs, 2Fs, 3Fs, or any integer multiple value of fs, then reconstruction is completely possible. If and only if the signal is sampled at a value of a frequency fs less than 2w, it will cause aliasing. Now, since 50 is an integer multiple value of 25, therefore, I can straight away conclude that reconstruction is possible. I am going to leave this part of the numerical as an exercise for you. You can try it out. And the hint here is to note that reconstruction is possible. Right. So, that is about this numerical. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.